Hey folks, David from Default Sound here, and today I'm going to uh, do a little video uh, answering a question that was asked in the Default Sound Insiders Facebook group. Uh, a fellow by the name of Adam uh, was hoping to do something pretty specific. He wanted to have an electric piano uh, covering the whole range of the keyboard with a pad on the lower half of the keyboard. Uh, and then what he wanted was for the lower half at lower velocities or lower playing intensity levels to only uh, trigger the pad. And then at higher velocity levels, he wanted the electric piano to come in as well. But he wanted the right side of the keyboard, his right hand, to play that electric piano no matter how soft or loud he was. So he wanted to have the ability to kind of blend uh, these sounds uh, dynamically as he was playing. And so uh, I worked on this a little bit in main stage and I found out that there's actually a pretty simple way to do this and this technique uh, actually has some broader uh, application for uh, other layering uh, things that you could do with it as well. So we're gonna take a look at it. First I'm gonna demonstrate the patch that I ended up uh, putting together as a demonstration for Adam. So this is what it ended up sounding like. higher intensities. You have the uh, electric piano come in as well. So initially I thought I would have to just use two instances of the electric piano to do this. Uh, but then I thought that it would actually be more efficient if I used an alias. So I'm gonna start from scratch and show you how I set this up. Cause it's super useful. Uh, let's see, here we go, new patch. Add two channel strips for now. And then real quick, I gotta change layer permissions. This is just because of the tonic drone section at the concert level. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split these two layers. I'm gonna set the high key of this yellow layer to middle C, and I'm gonna set the low key of this green layer to D3. So now we've got the keyboard split and the top half he wanted to be electric piano and obviously you could go in depth if you wanted but i'm just going to grab this stock electric piano sound it's just a Rhodes. sounds like that and then i'm going to open up retro synth just because it's simple and i'm just going to bring up a pad let's see I'm gonna waste time here. There we go. Let's see how that sounds. Quiet. There it is. Okay, that'll work. That's fine. So now we got the pad on the lower half and the electric piano on the top half. Um, so now what we need to figure out is how to get the electric piano on the bottom half to respond at only lower velocity. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to select the electric piano channel strip and hit command C to copy. And then you're going to go up here to edit and you're going to say paste as alias or you can hit command shift V to paste as alias. And there you can see now it paste, it looks just like a normal channel strip, only this little green arrow here lets you know that it is an alias. That means it is a mirror image of this channel strip. Uh, that also means it consumes less CPU resources because it's actually just uh, reaching out to the original channel strip to do all the processing for it. Aliases are pretty cool, but there's some limitations. You can't add an effect to a channel, to an alias channel strip without it mirroring over to the original. So, let me undo that. Uh, but there are some cool things you can do with aliases to get them to respond differently. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the layer for this alias channel strip. 
going to set the high key to be C3 and the low key all the way down at the bottom. So now you can see we've got a piano layer. All the way across the keyboard. Last thing we have to do is set this so that it only responds to higher velocities. So with the alias channel strip selected, we're going to go to the MIDI input tab. And see here in the inspector, we've got this velocity scaling area. This is where we're going to do this. I'm going to click on velocity input. And now this allows us to transform how main stage uh, interacts with velocity input for this channel strip. Now the cool thing about alias channel strips is that you can change the MIDI input information uh, and it won't affect the original channel strip. So you could change the velocity scaling without it affecting the original. So all we're gonna do, so right now it's representing that when it hears a zero input from your MIDI controller, it responds with zero output. And up here at the top, when it gets a 127 input for velocity, it gives you out a 127 input velocity, output velocity. See how that is right there on the screen? So now what we're going to do is drag this bottom side of the scale over. So now when main stage gets a input velocity of 64 or less from your MIDI controller, it's going to output zero. And then as this curve comes up, it scales exponentially. So it ends up being 127, 127, but it gets there by scaling. So they're about doubling uh, or, or decreasing by half the scale. Um, so that means at lower velocity, main stage is, is uh, this is interpreting it as a zero and it's not triggering the electric piano. So you can play around with this however you'd like. Uh, if you need it to be less sensitive, um, then you can go all the way up here so it'll only come in when you're really hammering on the keys. If you want it to be more sensitive and more dynamic. You gotta figure that out. And then you can also change the curve type if you want it to be a little bit more smooth or a little bit uh, more uh, harsh on the curve. You can. Play around with this however you'd like to get that to respond to you. Um, so that's a little bit about how you can transform velocity on an alias channel strip to achieve the effect that Adam was asking for. Now I wanted to see how far I could go in manipulating uh, an alias channel strip before it would start to affect uh, the original channel strip. And what I found, it's a little odd. The velocity scaling section seems to be independent as well as note input, but this controllers section uh, is connected. I suppose that's because it's interpreting MIDI data from the same controller. So I thought it'd be really cool if you could map modulation to volume here and bring the volume of just the alias in and out with your mod wheel, but that didn't work. It brought the volume of both in and out, kind of a bummer. Uh, filtering out also seems to affect both. Uh, I have found though that the transpose option only affects the alias channel strip. So I could transpose this down 24 steps. And it doesn't affect the alias, so you could play around with that. If you need to have the same sound available in multiple places on your keyboard and you don't want to double up uh, CPU intense plugins, you could alias them and just use the layer uh, transpose option here in MIDI input to stick it in multiple places and it's all actually being processed by the same instrument plugin. So uh, I would love it if some of you tried this technique and, uh, technique out and found out how much more functionality we could squeeze out of it because it's kind of new to me. Uh, I normally don't use aliases much because I've always felt like they're pretty limited in what they can actually do without sacrificing functionality. Uh, but this has got me thinking that there might be a little bit more to them, a little more usefulness than I'd originally thought. So if you have any tips that you like to do with aliases, leave them in the comments of the video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.